I want to tell you about my three resolutions for this year because maybe you're one of those many people who like to make resolutions around this time of year but I know others are not and the reason is for most people they don't actually work. People say I want to lose a stone or I'm going to give up this or that bad habit but the research shows by the beginning of February 85% of those resolutions will have turned into regrets because they'll be broken. Most people don't even last a week. But there is something you can drastically, dramatically do to increase your possibility that any such bad habit can be broken or good discipline maintained so that you'll see the result that you desire and it will work a positive change for you in 2021. Even though 2020 seems to force a lot of negative change on us because the question last year was not were you changed? Everyone, every business, every charity, church, family, individual had change happening to them. You shouldn't really expect any credit for that because the whole world changed and whether we liked it or not, we had to adapt how we meet, how we work, how we worship. Everything changed except God, who still has a purpose for you. That has not changed. So the question was not, were you changed, but have you transformed? See, we use the words change and transform synonymously, but there's a world of difference between being changed and transforming. Change is doing new things because of, uh, because of external influences. Transformation is internal, when beliefs and behaviours lead to a new way of being that remains even when the external pressure is removed or no longer there. Change is when I put on a coat because it's got cold. Transformation is when the caterpillar gets its wings. There's no going back and the resolutions that God wants to bring about for us are going to bring transformation from the inside of us. That's why I want the resolutions that God wants for me and I know that he'll help me because this isn't just about what I want, it's about what he wills. People spend a lot of time, sometimes waste a lot of life saying, I don't know God's will for my life, if only I knew God's will for me for this year. Well, I can help you with that. If you want to know God's will for your life, it's the same really for 2021 as it was for 2020 and every other year, whether they seem mostly good or bad. The Bible tells us here in God's will in three short verses from 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. It says, God's will for you in 2021 is be joyful, be prayerful and be grateful, always. This says, whatever happens, the joy of the Lord is your strength. So you can make the choice to rejoice always it says not just when everything's easy because this isn't dependent upon circumstances but depending on Christ who's always dependable so why don't you you could write the word rejoice in your phone calendar for when you wake up and start the new day with that rejoicing don't start by looking at the news I guarantee that will bring you down when you wake up give God the first word as soon as your day begins I like to read his word a devotional like open heaven and make the choice to rejoice and you say that out loud with me, I make the choice to rejoice. Because it's not a feeling you get, it's a decision you make. But you're going to say, what about the times when I'm sad or I'm struggling? How do you not just start rejoicing, but rejoice always? There's only one way, and again it's here. It says, pray continually. The Greek here literally is pray without intermission. Because you can pray anytime, anywhere, about anything. And the Lord is always listening. You don't have to arrange a Zoom with him. He never has two busy, blocked out times on his calendar. He's ready now, and now, and now. And you can pray about anything, big or small. If it's worth worrying about, you can pray about it. Nothing in 2021 will be too big or too small for God. Rejoice always, pray continually. See, if we have to spend more time alone, it's a retreat to advance. Listen, actually from the day you come to Jesus Christ, you are never ever alone. He's promised you personally, never will I leave you, nor will I forsake you. Where can I go from your presence? You know when I sit and when I rise, you perceive my thoughts from afar. You discern my going out and my lying down. You're familiar with all of my ways. He says to you, fear not for I am with you. Do not be dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. I will help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. Don't let anything stop you praying. Nothing can stop the Lord. So this says, what's God's will for you? It's to be joyful, to be prayerful, and to be grateful in 2021. Rejoice always. Pray continually. Give thanks in all circumstances, it says. Notice, God doesn't say, 
give thanks for all circumstances. That's not what it says. The world he sends us to is really hurting badly right now. People see no purpose in pain, no hope for the future. People are ready, more ready than ever perhaps for good news amidst all of the confusion and grief and disappointment and pain and fear there is everywhere. In the midst of all of that, if you can be somebody who is joyful and prayerful and grateful, you're gonna stand out and people are gonna to want to know, why is it? Why is it that you are like this? And the answer is Jesus Christ. So if you think bad things never happen to good people, you've probably never read this book, the Bible. You certainly never thought too much about the cross because that was where the worst things all happened to the best, the only true good person, the Son of God. So if a day comes in 2021 when you feel like you have nothing else to give thanks for, you can always give thanks in every circumstance for that never failing love of Jesus Christ that came to you on the cross. And from there, what else do you do? Well, as the old hymn says, count your blessings, name them one by one, and it will surprise you what the Lord has done. So as we start to look at now at the year ahead, a spirit of fear might want to come and take over you, but gratitude is the vaccine for fear. It's impossible when you've got gratitude inside of you for fear to remain. As I look back over the last year or so, yes, I've had some of the worst days, some of the hardest weeks. That made it one of my toughest years, but there were some very precious moments too. And what I do, I list those times, those things, when I start to feel down, times with God because I was never alone. Times with my wife Zoe, with my family and friends and church family, whether we could briefly be together face to face or even for this technology that allows us to continue to connect and, and be community together. Yeah, I thank my God for Zoom and I thank my God for so many people who've connected to us online in new ways this year. We've had people who found Jesus through our ministry this year, through our Alpha courses, new people finding Jesus, becoming members here in 2020. Because you know, nothing can stop the Lord. God is still able to work all things for good for those who love him and are called according to his purpose. So I can give thanks in all things. You don't have to give thanks for everything, but in everything. In everything you can give thanks. When we remember, he's still working. So this says, this is the will of God. You don't need another book, another prophetic conference. You don't need to lay another fleece for 2021. Resolve to be joyful and prayerful and grateful. Make the choice to rejoice. Pray about anything. Give thanks for something. Always. That's it. That's God's will for you. All the rest is details. Why don't you make that resolution with me now? Three things. If God's prompting you to join me in this, let's pray and ask the, the Lord to help you to choose to rejoice rather than complain, to pray rather than worry, and to thank him for what you've got rather than focusing on what's been taken away. I said there's a reason most resolutions don't work for most people, but you're not most people, so you're gonna be good with this. The reason is many people never actually resolved anything. They just wished, they just hoped that they'd spend less or save more or run 10k or, or whatever. See, that's not a resolution because they haven't resolved. The Bible says, sorry, the dictionary says a resolution to resolve is, is to make a firm decision, is to be determined and take action. If you've resolved, it means you've cut off all the other options. You've, you're going to put everything into making it happen. You possibly can. And you're going to make a plan to accomplish it, ready to take action. People say they made a resolution, but they only really had a hope that things would turn out better or change. But again, the dictionary says, a resolution is a firm decision to do or not do something. So you heard the three resolutions I wanna make, and I'm asking God to help me keep on this year. So it goes right the way through this year so that we're gonna shine like stars in the darkness and lead many to the Lord, whatever happens. We have every reason to be joyful, prayerful, and thankful every day. And then we're gonna find we're right in the center of God's will for our lives. Will you join me in prayer? Just talk to the Father now where you are and say, Lord, I'm praying for your help and I do want to be joyful and prayerful and thankful in 2021. I make the choice to rejoice. Help me to be always joyful as I overflow with your spirit. Whenever I'm confused or, 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 or happy or sad, Lord, I want to resolve to be continually prayerful. And from this connection with you, when I don't know what's happening and I can't feel grateful for everything, I will be thankful in everything that happens this year. In Jesus' mighty name, amen.